Hey y'all, it's the DIY Audio Guy, and today we're going to do something different. We're going to kick off the first car audio build ever on this channel. We're going to be putting a three-way front stage in my old pickup truck. If that sounds like fun, stick around for the adventure. Let's start off with a quick walk around and check out the existing system in the truck. This is a third gen Ram, which means that it is old. That's good news for DIY audio. No complicated integration, no fancy touchscreen from the factory. The miles are low for its age and I keep it in good mechanical condition. The body's got a few dents and dings that you can see. The paint is still mostly in good shape, but it ain't no show car. And all that's fine with me. If it runs and has a great radio, then I'm a happy DIY audio guy. Let's start out under the hood and it is dirty. I need to give it a good cleaning before the next video. I've got a cheap battery from Advanced Auto Parts going to some zero gauge power wire running to a great big fuse holder sitting in a DIY Audio Guy custom ABS mounting bracket. From there we go into the firewall through the clutch delete. It couldn't be easier to run a power wire in these old Dodge trucks. Let's jump in the truck and check out the interior. For a head unit, we have a single den Alpine. This unit is packed with features. It's got front and rear high pass crossovers, plus a subwoofer crossover. You can adjust the frequency, you can adjust the slope, you can adjust the level. No need for a base knob. When you hit the menu button, you get a sub level adjustment right on the head unit. Then you've got a nine band fully parametric equalizer. You can adjust the frequency, you can adjust the level, and you can adjust the cue. It also has time delay, so you can get that perfect front stage image. And if you don't like fiddling with the buttons on the radio, all of this can be controlled with the Alpine TuneIn app on your phone. Another great feature is the spatial setting that can be used to make a really wide front stage or a really narrow front stage depending on what you want. This is done basically by delaying or speeding up the rear speakers. Speaking of speakers, let's check out the doors. I've got Polk Audio coaxials in all the doors. You can see the golden cones through the factory speaker grills. I've had these for at least four years and they do a fine job. I'm just ready for an upgrade. These are allegedly six and a half inch speakers, but I've learned that the size printed on the box is pretty much meaningless. When I pull these out, I'm going to show them side by side with the speakers that are going in to replace them. And you'll see what I mean. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss that. Let's get to the good stuff. Everybody wants to see the subwoofers. They are under the back seat in our prefab box. The subwoofers are also Polk Audio. These subs met the requirements that I needed for the box and they were on sale because the DIY audio guy likes a bargain. Back there with them I have my Rockford Fosgate 4 channel amp for my mids and highs and an Alpine mono block. I've also got a big fuse block and wire everywhere. Each time I upgrade I try to clean up the wire just a little bit more. In this build I'm going to be replacing the amps with something a bit more compact and cleaning up the wiring. The most important part is something that you can't even see, and that's the sound treatment. I've treated the doors with constrained layer dampening, or CLD. This decreases panel resonance, which not only decreases vibration from the audio system, it also lowers the road noise from that vibration. CLD has diminishing returns. You don't need 100% coverage, especially if you use a real thick and heavy product. I'll give you some links to the stuff I recommend down in the comments. I also treated the floor and back wall as well. Then I put down two additional layers. The first is a neoprene closed cell foam that serves as a decoupler. This keeps parts from making noise by banging and rubbing together. On top of that is mass loaded vinyl, which is the only thing in the build that actually blocks sound. There are a lot of different brands that carry these sound deadening products. I will give you a couple of links down in the description. For this build, I need to put the mass loaded vinyl and the closed cell foam on the doors. I haven't done that yet. So now that we know what's in the truck at the moment, let's go ahead and take a look at the stuff that we're going to be putting into the truck. This particular vehicle has speaker locations in the dash from the factory that are unused at the moment. My game plan is to take advantage of that and see just how many speakers I can put into the front stage of this pickup truck. 
Before we do that, though, I want to take a minute to say thank you to all of the people who are supporting my channel by hitting that like button, by subscribing, and by leaving comments. I just want to take a second and give a shout out to some of the people who've been commenting on my videos. Uh, DIY Radios and Boomboxes. He's got a channel that he's got started. He's probably got about 10 or 15 subscribers now. Go check him out if you have a chance. The Third Era. I met The Third Era when I did a live show with 12 Volt Talk with hi Five Vega and Williston Audio Labs. Thank you so much for being a part of my community and joining me on my adventure by commenting on my videos. Jason Zemer, also met Jason uh, on 12 Volt Talk. He and I were on the podcast together. Stoner916, thanks for making a comment and subscribing. BN Audio, thank you so much for being a part of my adventure. Mark Wiebe, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, na- <laughs> I'm sure I'm pronouncing that name wrong. Uh, but thank you for commenting on my video. hi Five Vega. hi Five Vega has a fantastic channel, and he's given me so much positive feedback since I've started my channel, and, and I really do appreciate him for jumping in and being a great guy and joining the adventure. How to Epic. Hey, how to Epic. Thank you for subscribing. Quality Audio. Thank you for subscribing. I think Quality Audio's got a, um, got a channel as well. Zachary Morrow, thank you for uh, commenting on my video. I appreciate that. Jonathan Roman, thanks for commenting on my video. Marcus Stanford, I think I met Marcus on the Budget Gem or Budget Bus Facebook page, and he's made a lot of great comments on my videos. Rodney Widger, uh, thank you as well. <clears throat> my uh, screen's not scrolling down. There it goes. Uh, Wilston Audio Labs, if you're not following Wilston Audio Labs' YouTube channel, then what rock do you live under, <laughs> right? He's he's the guy right here. Uh, Tiger Craps, thanks for commenting on my on my video. I think Craps means like a uh, the dice game. Um, Dimitri Tyner, thanks for commenting on my video. Joe and Tell, Joe and Tell's got a fantastic uh, c- channel where he works on home audio. Hey Joe, thank you so much for watching and uh, comment a lot, commenting on my videos. Cameron thirty three ninety five, thank you for being a part of my adventure. Samir Mohammed, thank you so much for asking some great questions about crossovers on my crossover video. I sure appreciate you a whole lot. Charles Brown, thanks for being a part of the adventure. Charles, uh, Sound Filter, Sound Filter's got a channel as well. Go check that one out. Uh, Keith SK Gaming, thank you for for joining the adventure. I appreciate all of you for commenting. Uh, Seaballs138, that's an interesting username. Thanks for commenting. I appreciate you all joining me on my adventure. I read every comment. I try to reply to every comment, especially when my channel is new and small. I can do that. Y'all, looking at the channel statistics, uh, less than 10% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. So if you like what you're what you're seeing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i'd love to have you as a subscriber as i march on to a thousand subscribers thank you all very much well, let's take a look at what's going to go in the truck as we work on this build this is an sb acoustics sb17 they offer multiple versions of this i went with the polycone version since it's going to be in the door and the door is subject to just a little bit more moisture than the rest of the vehicle it's got a big beefy magnet on the back of it. It's a whole lot bigger than the six and a half inch speakers that are in the doors right now. Uh, they call this a six inch speaker. I'm not sure why. If you measure across the cone area from the edge of the surround to the edge of the surround, it's about five and three quarters of an inch, almost six inches. And if you measure from the edges of the speaker, it's just a six and three quarter inch roughly speaker. Here it is sitting next to an eight inch Dayton Audio uh, woofer. They both weigh about the same. The magnet on the 8 isn't that much bigger. The SB17 has some kind of a of a poly basket it seems, but it feels really stiff and sturdy. Here you can get a good look at the voice coil, at the spider. Let me pull that plastic protective cover off here so you can get a better look at this speaker. I think this thing's going to do a really great job in my door. Let's take a look at what's going up in the dash. This is a Peerless TC9. It is an 8 ohm driver and it says 5 watts on the side, but the website I bought it from showed that it would handle more than 5 watts. And when this thing is crossed over appropriately, the power handling is really kind of a moot point. This driver has a plastic frame. It's really small and compact. It came highly recommended on the DIY mobile audio forums and it's generally regarded as kind of a hidden budget gem of a 3.5 inch speaker. And for the tweeters, I'm going to be using these AirMotion Transformers. I use these speakers in a Bluetooth boombox project. I'll give you a link to that video here. 
These are a unique driver. They don't operate like a traditional pistonic cone movement or a dome tweeter. They have this diaphragm that looks kind of like an accordion. I ordered this four channel amplifier because I need four more channels of amplification. And then I realized that I really didn't have enough room for it inside of the vehicle. So I've gone ahead and ordered some smaller amplifiers that are less powerful and have an even smaller footprint than this. And I'm going to replace my subwoofer amplifier with this thing right here because I really need to save as much space as I can. It's really kind of tight underneath the seat behind that subwoofer box. And of course, if you're going to do this, you're also going to need some power distribution blocks, some fuse blocks, these kinds of things. Here I've got several of those. I'm a big fan of always putting a fuse on the wire anytime the wire gets smaller. And finally, if we're going to have all these channels, we need a digital signal processor. This is one of the most affordable processors on the market. Uh, four channels in, eight channels out. I don't actually have enough channels to do everything that I want to do because I also want to make sure I'm running my rear speakers. But I'm working on some ways to get around that right now. So there we go. That's all the stuff that's going to go in the truck during this rebuild process. Building speakers is my hobby. I enjoy doing this. It's been a real big adventure and I'm having a lot of fun filming it so that you also can join in on my adventure. And I would love to have you as a subscriber. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next update in this build log. Thank you for watching.